And a very good morning to you, boys and girls. It's uh, Saturday, the 2nd of February, 2019. Welcome to a very snowy Bracknell. Yes, the snow is on the floor outside, but it's surprising how local I found it. Uh, as you know, I was up in Lincolnshire last week, uh, as usual, although I won't be going up there for a couple of months now. And uh, we, we had no snow whatsoever over the last few days. Not a single snowflake. I'll give you the ground has been a bit icy sometimes, and it has been bitterly cold there, but absolutely no snow whatsoever. Isn't that funny? Anyway, I'll come to that in a minute. Uh, there's a little bit of an issue with yesterday's Facebook uh, uh, video. For some... Are we a bit bright this morning? Is it a bit bright in here? I've just looked at myself on there. It's <laughs> ever so bright. Just a minute. Let me just turn myself down a bit. Dear me, uh, that one there? There we go. That bit better. Is that a bit easier on the eye? Sorry. <laughs> I was like, I was like, it was like the transfiguration then, wasn't it, dear? I thought I would have been about trans, transfigured to a higher level or something like that. Um, yes, with yesterday's uh, Facebook video, for some strange reason, it is still showing me as live, although you can't see it. And I can't post it and you can't watch it back from the beginning. So what I did with yesterday's video, once we finished, I simply posted up the uh, the YouTube link, which is working fine. I don't know. Why, it's still so, it's showing me live now. That's yesterday's video for some reason. Very, very strange. And um, I gather I've just turned on my uh, message phone. Let me read it to you here. Uh, I gather. Oh, wrong phone. Hang on a minute. I have so many phones in here, dear. Oh, where's that gone then? Uh... I, oh, there it is. There it is. It's it's hidden underneath my tissue. Always very important to keep tissues by the computer, boys. It really is. You never know when you might need them. Uh, yes, we've st Maureen has still got an issue with her uh, her watching YouTube videos um, on her uh, uh, Virgin Media TiVo box. T TiVo TiVo box. And she says, says, I've still got the same problem. You must have a privacy setting on playlist as I can't see it. Now, I've had another quick look. And the privacy setting on the playlist, yes, there is one, and it is set on public. Well, it, you don't actually set it on public. There's there's a little, like a little slider that you pull across to make it private, okay? It's not like private or public. You simply slide it across and it becomes private. Well, it isn't slid across on the private. So I, really, I don't see, I don't know why you can't see that. I really don't. It's it's a little bit beyond my technical capabilities at the moment um, to actually find that. That being said, I'll have another look later and uh, I'll get my mate to come up here. Um, he's coming over. We ca I can't be here too long today. We certainly not won't do an hour. But uh, my mate's coming over later. And sometimes it sometimes takes uh, a fresh pair of eyes. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like when you lose something and you're looking everywhere for it. It's been hours and then someone comes, bang, they found it in two minutes. So I'll ask him to have a look at it as well um, and see if we can find some sort of setting there that has changed from uh, uh, private to uh, from public to private on there. I don't know. Now, uh, those of you that do watch a show via YouTube, may I ask you, has anything changed for you or is everything sort of in the normal order? It it needs someone who sometimes goes back in kind of the back catalogue and has a look at other things that I might have done on there. Can you see those all OK as you have always been able to or has something changed for me? We, we don't seem to be able to find what's wrong with this at all. So I, I'm really sorry. It, I'm, it's nothing to do with me. I'm sure it's nothing that I've done there. We just can't find what it is. and we're, It's a bit of a mystery to me. As I say, Maureen, she doesn't have internet, but she watches the show via a YouTube app, I think, on her TiVo, uh, uh, TiVo box. That's given me an idea, actually. I could... Um, what I could do is go to my mate's house because he's got the YouTuber app. And, of course, he won't have my account on his television, if you see what I mean. So I'll go over there and see if I can look on his telly and see what the problem is because we, we really don't know at the moment, Maureen. But we are trying for you. All right, my darling? And we'll keep our fingers crossed with that one. Right, who's with us this morning? Here come the names. The most important name of the day is at the top of the list, of course. It's the lovely Shania Steele. Any snow on the Isle of Wight, Shania? You were begging for it the other day. How could you want snow? I found to see how anyone could possibly actually want to see snow where they are. 
at all. No, thank you. Morning to Katie Ann Patterson. Morning. Angela Walters in uh, sunny Melbourne, Australia. Diane Jeb. Good morning. Kevin Webster. All those old buildings on there. They are magical buildings. That's Wokingham. You mean the old buildings with the road and the traffic lights, don't you? That's Wokingham where I go to church. That's a little bit further on than the church. The main sort of uh, town centre. It's a lovely place, Wokingham. Really, really nice there. Um, <clears throat> morning to Michelle White. Morning, Michelle. Lovely chatting to you yesterday on the phone. It was, Misha. And how lovely just to have a sensible conversation on that particular telephone. Usually it's all just shouting and screaming and him just telling us what is what the latest thing is he's bought. You know. <laughs> morning, Misha. Hello to Johnny Key. Good morning, Johnny. Brendan's there. Hello, Brendan. You can't see me. Something wrong at your end, Brendan. Everyone else can, mate. Have a little adjustment of your bits and pieces and see what happens there, OK? Good morning to Mr. Ray Reynolds, our very good friend. Uh, uh, one of my closest friends, actually. Ray Reynolds is in the house. Katie watched karaoke, OK? Uh, she was snoring last night, were you? <laughs> on the YouTube, that was fine. Uh, Brendan's on the uh, the Norfolk Broads. No snow there, you see. Uh, like I say, Brendan, there was no... I don't think we've had anything on the East Coast at all. Certainly not. Um, I'll tell you my journey in a moment. Uh, good morning to Chris Marlow. Good morning, Chris. I know we said we were going to meet up at some point in Skegness. I'm not up there now for two months. My uh, caravan site is closed now, unfortunately. So we'll have to do something after that. All right, my darling. Uh, morning to Gustav. How did the eviction go? Did they rehouse you or are you in temporary accommodation? <laughs> or oh, you are naughty. Gustav and I actually are very, very similar in the way we think about things. We, we just see stupidness everywhere. Absolute stupidness uh, everywhere. Uh, Guy, good morning to Guy. Stephen Sales as well. Is that's Everyone's uh, on the Facebook this morning. Uh, John Parrish, good morning, John P. JP, John P. John P, does that sound better? JP or John P? What do you prefer? Like JR. Are you, the, are you like the JR of, uh, of the Philippines? Are you... <laughs> Are you like the one with all the money and all that, Jay, J uh, John? <laughs> I bet you are. Hello to Coco Bungie, who's joining us live this morning. Very good morning to you. All right, my darling. Coco's there as well. Good. Uh, so uh, yesterday, after after the uh, after the show yesterday, I, I didn't have as much to do in the caravan as I thought I'd do because you've only got so much in there. And on a Friday, I, I usually start Thursday night. I have a little bit of a clean up. You know, out comes the spray. Ch -ch -ch oh, do you, you know those sprays you buy? Kitchen sprays, bathroom sprays, and all that. I hate it when the end doesn't spray, don't you? You know, they seem to have two types of ends on them. I'm going to have to test them out in the supermarket in future before I buy them. It's so annoying. So you get one sort that the spray is, whoosh, whoosh, and the other sort where the spray is more of an ejaculation. Do you know what I mean? And it, sorry? <laughs> Stop that now. It, it kind of goes, and it don't sort of spread out very much. Have you noticed that? Oh, and I've got this one down at the caravan at the moment, and it's an ejaculation one, where it don't spray very much, and then you have to rub it. I always put too much on. I spray so much stuff around everywhere on this, and then you're wiping it, and it's still there, and you wipe it, and you and it's still there. <laughs> so I must, I must check in future. So I usually have a little bit of a, a clear up on the Thursday. And then on the Friday when I finished, I thought, well, I probably won't be able to go swimming today because I'm going to have a lot to do. Well, there wasn't. It was just normal stuff that I normally do. And only two extra things, really. Turning off the gas and turning off the water. You know, so that in the event of a burst pipe, which is quite possible, because unless you keep the heating on in a caravan, they get cold very, very quickly. Uh, so I've turned the water off so that if there is a burst pipe, damage limitation. You just get a little bit of water come out. Um, and then when you go back and turn, the, you realise there's a leak somewhere. So that's the idea of turning the water off. There is supposed to be a drain down valve. Well, I'm sure there is somewhere on that caravan. I haven't been able to locate it, unfortunately. So I couldn't do that. However, I've turned the water off, opened all the taps and uh, that's the best I can do there. And then I packed my bag and it was all ready. And I thought, well, I've got time to go swimming then. So I did go swimming up at the Boston Jeff Mulder Centre which was practically empty. That's a full-size council-run swimming pool. Um, and there's always a lot of space in there. There was hardly anyone in there at all. So I had a nice swim going up and down. Uh, there were some very nice lads on the tall chairs that, uh, that I couldn't take my eyes off, I must admit. I can't lie to you. 
I got, why would I lie to you? No reason at all. So I was watching him while I was going up and down. Eventually, I got out and got in the shower. Oh, God, cold showers. Not actually stone cold, tepid. Tepid showers. And remember, it was cold yesterday. And it wasn't a very pleasant experience. Fortunately, someone came in and said, these showers are a bit cold. He said, oh, you need to run them a bit. I said, well, I've been under there 10 minutes now. I said, it's going to be too late for me. So then I went and got changed. And uh, the, the person put his head, I could hear him. He kept pushing the button and it wasn't getting any warmer. So something's obviously gone wrong with the showers. Either that or because it was such a long day, the pipe run might be very, very long. So by the time the very hot water gets down to that tap, or that, that shower thing, you know, it, it's gone cold anyway. That's just one of those things, unfortunately. So I had the shower, came back, uh, had a bit of lunch, went to bed, then got up, turned the water off, turned the gas off and left. And the journey yesterday, the journey yesterday from Lincolnshire down uh, to work at Central Station in London to do my karaoke night was the best one I've had so far. There was absolutely no traffic whatsoever. I didn't queue, at, not even in London. How strange is that? I didn't queue anywhere at all. I didn't get stuck anywhere at all. And there was absolutely no snow whatsoever until I got to Barnet, which is kind of at the a an end of the um, A1M. And even there, it wasn't on the road. It was just a little bit on the side. You know, like a bit of a sprinkling on the sides of the road. The road itself was very wet. So it might have been there earlier. But nevertheless, it was just very a bit wet. So I came into London and then I got to Highgate. And uh, the, the, it started snowing there, but only very, very light. Very light. There was no snow on the ground anywhere. And the thing is with Highgate, that's got some really steep hills. I mean, like that. Right, like that, going up and down like that. Highgate, this is in London. And if the snow was to come down there and settle, I don't think you'd get up the hill, to be honest, or down it comes to that. Or you'd just slide down it and slide into all the other cars as you were going down it. But nothing to write home about. And I got to work. I parked right outside the pub. Um, and we started the karaoke night off last night, uh, which was busy when I got there. We had the most fantastic night last night. It was really good. And a lot of brand new faces. Strangely enough, hardly any of the regulars were there at all last night. I don't know why. Uh, just one of those things. Even Roy wasn't there last night. Roy with the short shorts. But it might have been a little bit too cold for him to come out. Um, but a really, really good night last night. A lot of people that I've never seen in there before. And they were all up for having a go. They were all up. And we had some damn good singers there. As I've always said before, doesn't matter whether you can sing or not. Everyone's welcome at my karaoke. Just please don't do depressing ballads. Please don't. I'm not going to mention names. No names of people that constantly do depressing ballads. OK, but uh, it was a good mixture of songs last night. In fact, there weren't many depressing ballads at all last night. So it was really, really nice and so nice to see so many new faces as well. Uh, that we welcome into the fold, of course. So if you ever want to come down, I do two karaoke's there. One on a Friday night, 8.30 to midnight, and one on a Monday night, along with cheap drinks, that's 7.30 uh, to 11 o'clock. Uh, the guys upstairs, I got a free free portion of chips as well, which were very, very nice. Free portions of chips. Uh, a free portion of chips. That was nice. So uh, that finished. Coming home, I was very concerned coming home because we've seen on the news that Berkshire had been badly hit by snow. And I thought, well, soon I'm going to bump into this. Anyway, I travelled for an hour. It's much quicker coming here than it is to Lincolnshire. I travelled for about an hour and 10 minutes. And the journey is an hour and 20 minutes before I saw any, any sight of snow at all. How funny is that? I left London. I came, I, I, I always go around the back. I, I don't go on the Euston Road coming home at all anymore. I just don't do it anymore. I avoid that road like the bloody plague because of the Uber drivers on there. They're a nightmare. So I come out of there. I go round the back, up through Camden, and then I drop down just before, and I come past, um, uh, what's the station? There's one station that's kind of out of the way of all the others along the... Uh, Along the Marleybone Road. No, it's not. It's it's off the Marleybone Road. Oh, okay. oh, that might be Marleybone Station. No, would it be? I don't know. Can't remember, but it, it, it's kind of around the back of the houses. 
and I go past, kind of almost past that, and then I get back down there, and then I turn right, and there's the there's the there's the fly over there. So I avoid that whole part of the Euston Road by doing it. I go near the through the park and all that business. Um, I'm climbing up this thing, and I thought, well, I've got I'm gonna hit, bound to hit this snow at some point, right? And I carried up, went on the M25, nothing. M4, nothing. M25, nothing. M3. Now, that was closed yesterday at some point because it was so bad. There was no sign of snow whatsoever. How weird is this? And only a couple of hours before, my mate, who also lives in Bracknell, was telling me how bad the snow was. It was pouring down. Even my neighbour next door, he texted me and said, be careful when you get to Bracknell. It's really bad here. And there was nothing. Down the M3, still nothing. And then I'm going up. The exit coming off the M3 and there, little bit of snow either side. I thought, oh, right, here we go. And the appearance of the snow was very, very sudden. It wasn't snowing, OK, but it was suddenly there on the sides of the road. Big piles of snow. So localised, it was unbelievable. And I came down and as I got closer to my house, it was much worse here. Uh, and coming down my side roads, indeed, one of my roads was closed. There's a there's a road with a very steep hill. The police have closed that road completely. So I had to go right round the other side and back in again and up the hill there. So that was all right. But it was a lot of uh, hard, what I call it, snow that had turned to slush that had then turned back to ice again. There was a lot of that on the road. So it was, I love the noise, don't you? The crispy noise as you go over that snow. Home over there. Down, my road was pretty bad. It's only a short road. Uh, so what I do is I go in, I come out of automatic on the car and I go into low gear, position one, you know, gear one. Uh, so I'm like inching down very, very slowly down that road. And at the end, there's a, there's a sharp turn left. And I mean, I mean, people park there. They park, at the, it's like a T-junction. So you get down the end of the road and then it stops, right? People park there. You would never park there if the road's going to be icy, would you? I mean, any common sense would tell you not to park there because someone might come down the road and, and lose control. I lost control years ago, as you well know. But there we are, there's someone parked there. Anyway, I managed to get around the corner, got to my garage, opened the door. I haven't got an electric door, I'm afraid. No, I don't push a button. I had to physically get out of the car, which was cold. Uh, opened the door, pulled the doors open. And as I'm trying to go into the garage, because there's a slight incline, and then the car just stopped. Oh, come on. Oh, no. So I've, I've, I've gone back again. I've gone a little bit further back again and just given it a little bit of throttle, and it's gone up there. And, it's, and then it's sliding to the right. Some, no, to the left. It slid to the left. Oh, it's going to hit the door off, off the accelerator. Hmm. Perhaps I should leave it outside the garage. I'll, I'll try once more. I thought I'd try once more. And I went right back, right back, and gave it a little bit, a minor little bit of welly, just to get it in motion. And up it went, and slight, and then it slight slide to the right. But I got over the snow, and then, of course, the wheels gripped the inside of the garage again, and we're in the garage, and closed the door. Lovely for that. Got home. So, and actually, it didn't take me any extra time at all. I thought it was going to take me an hour and three quarters, two hours to get home last night, because I thought I was going to have to take it easy in the snow. Not at all. Not at all. It was a fantastic journey. So then I've got my bags out the back of the car. Oh, God. Here we go. Right. You're, oh, you're, this is the best part. This is the best part. I've come, walked from my garage along my path. Of course, I've gone arse over tit and I. Because <laughs> there's thick snow there and I've got shoes on with like shiny bottoms. You know, there's there's no grip on those shoes at all. Ted Baker shoes. And I've gone arse over tit with my bags <laughs> backwards. <laughs> but of course, because there was a lot of snow there, I haven't hurt myself. If, that, if I'd have landed on the concrete there, I would have done myself in, wouldn't I? So I've slipped over. I've got all snow up the back. I'm just grateful that none of the neighbours were up watching me. <laughs> or anyone else. <laughs> Never mind. Got in the house, done myself some dinner, cup of tea, uh, brushed myself down and uh, brushed my teeth and went to bed. And, and here we are this morning. So that was my day yesterday. But it is surprising, uh, very, very surprising how... Um, uh, how how localised that snow was. Absolutely nothing until I got close to my house. Funny, isn't it, really? Uh, who's there? Who's sending messages off? Just a moment. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba. Ooh, where are we? Let's just go up there a little bit. Uh, Chris, your calendar is still on January. Thank you, Brendan. Thank you. 
One moment, please. One moment, one minute. Thank you for pointing it out, Brendan. Very good, dear. One minute. There we are. Barry Manilow's February picture has now appeared as if by magic. It's one of my favourite things, this. The gun stapler. Didn't you have this for fun with this at school when you got older one? Come on, kid. Gow, gow, gow. <laughs> Anyone else do the gun stapler thing at school? What about compasses? We had one bloke. His name was Stephen, it was. We had one bloke. He used to throw compasses at people. <laughs> Not me. <coughs> I think he secretly fancied me. One of the straight... You always get some straight lad who secretly fancies the gay one. Oh, absolutely always. But it's our little secret. We have to keep the secrets. Um, uh, good morning to... Did I say hello to your guy? Good morning to Guy Stephen Sowers. Morning, Guy. Looking sharp. Thank you very much. I try. I do make an effort in the morning, as you know, Guy. I do try to make an effort. Uh, ejaculations at this time in the morning. Lucky you, says Brendan. Yeah, but only if you're using cleaning fluid. We've got to have the one with a spray that comes out like that. I hate it. Get rid of it, says Katie. Yeah, chuck it away. That's a good idea. Good morning to Joanna over there on the YouTube. Bernadette Lake is in the house. Good morning, Bernie. Lovely lady. I had dinner with her, lunch with her and uh, my niece and uh, the whole family on Thursday. I think it was Wednesday or Thursday this week, wasn't it? Can you turn on your bottle lights? Yeah, if you want me to. I don't mind doing that. Yeah. We can turn the bottle lights on. There we are. Bottle lights are on. Pretty, isn't it? My bottle lights are on, especially for Katie this morning. Hello to Passeribo. Morning, sir. Gustav, that's not Barry Manilow. It's Donald Trump. It's not Donald Trump. It's Barry Manilow. How many times do I have to keep telling you? Just Have you ever been to a Barry Manilow concert, Gustav? Oh, no. I only go to Kylie Minogue and Madonna. Are you one of those? Are you one of those? You go to the Kylie Minogue concerts and Madonna. Is it you who wants the extra stripe on the flag? I bet it's you. That's the sort of left-wing thing you do, Gustav. Dear me. Gustav is a is a, is an avid Remainer, aren't you, Gustav? <laughs> Shania. I use them up frequently at school to put up displays. Oh, no, they're great for controlling kids as well. You can pin them to boards. Yeah. If, if you get an unruly child, you just pit not through their skin. Not like Jesus. Not like Jesus through the skin. No, you pin it through the clothes like that and you pin a child up against the wall. And then you send photos of him and then you, you take photos of them and then you send them to their parents and their parents come down and kick the shit out of you. <laughs> That's what to do, Shania. Morning to Adam the Plumber. Uh, did you shut off all services? Of course, all services were shut off. I don't turn the electric off uh, in my caravan because I've got a freezer on there and it's got a bit of food in there. Uh, good morning to Deptor SOS Gregorian joining us uh, this morning on this morning's show as well. So that's excellent. Now, we've got a few stories. I can't be here too long today uh, because my mate's coming around later. I've got a, got a rush to the bank this morning because people have got no money to borrow. I, I lend the bank the money and they lend it to people for mortgages. So I've got to rush down to the bank later and my mate will be uh, taking me down now along with several security people in case I'm bashed over the head when I'm when I'm standing in the bank at the machine. The very, very slow machine, you know, push a few buttons and then you wait. Come on. And then it says, work. what does it say? Working or I don't know what it says on there. Um, let's have some news. Oh, who shall we start with this morning? It's Gemma Collins. That old bag with no talent. This story is in all the papers this morning, boys and girls. And you know that this has to be true. No one has made up this story. You ready? OK, Gemma Collins reportedly launched into an explosive rant where she claimed she was a effing star compared to her co-stars who were, and I quote, not up to her TV level. Look, listen, I mean, I don't know how many times I've got to tell you this. There's a lot of people on the telly who are fakes. She is one of them. Do not believe that happy-go-lucky person on the telly. There's an awful lot of fake people on that telly. And I just don't understand how they've got fans, to be honest. Right? I like people to tell me as it is. Don't wrap it up. Just tell me. How. These people are giving you the image that you want to see. Right? 
It says, in an alleged, unearthed secret recording. Secret recording. Uh, uh, secret recording. In a secret recording, which was likely taken during her time on Celebs Go Dating. I don't know what that is. Some sort of, um, is it like a, is it like the undateables? Something like that. I don't know what that is. Uh, it appeared to, obviously, some sort of dating show. Maybe like Blind Date, I don't know. It appeared to show Gemma refusing to go and film in Wales with three unnamed girls and the show's bosses can have her £60,000 fee back. She turned down 60000 because she don't want to go to Wales. Well, you shouldn't agree to do it then. Why would you agree to do it and then back out? Terrible. She's 37. Uh, she's made the headlines recently for uh, her apparent diva behaviour behind the scenes at Dancing on Ice. Seem to be saying she makes her co-stars look good on camera. Really? Oh, I'm sure you do, darling. You're, what you mean, what you actually mean there is that you are so bad, you make, a co you make your co-stars look, 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 uh, look better. You're so bad at everything you do, your co-stars actually look better. Is that what you're saying, lovey? Is that what you're saying? She said, during the alleged recording obtained by The Sun, have me hanging around to film with three girls that are clearly not up to my TV level. Don't put me in scenes with those girls. <laughs> and you know this is true. You, you've only got to look at people. You've got to be pretty thick not to realise what people are actually like in real life. I tell you. Gemma added that the show was about the attempts at finding love and she didn't want to have to listen to the other celebrities' experience. She continued by telling whoever she was having the row with, I'm, I'm an effing star. You can't have me hanging around all day. Growing tearful, Gemma then appears to demand to know what she is hanging around for again before admitting that the dating show is not right for her. What, did you think you weren't going to get picked, love? I think you might have fought right there. Who's going to pick you, dear? Who? Oh, no, just a minute. Arge. Oh, Arge, your boyfriend, Arge. She, but she can't have been with Arge at the same at the same time, surely, unless she's got several boyfriends all at the same time. She becomes exasperated and tells the person she is arguing with, this is in the mail this morning, that they don't film the show the way they, she is used to. And after filming Towie all year, she refuses to hang around for anyone. Attempting to leave, Gemma adds that she isn't sticking around and if they want to film her, then they can come to her native Essex rather than Wales. Well, what's wrong with Wales? Well, you are one, dear. A whale. There's nothing wrong with Wales. Before finally appearing to leave confrontation, Gemma said, how can I not be on screen? I'm the best one on the show. Take your 60 grand back. Grand back. I'm out of here. On her way out of the situation, Gemma added that if they were planning on using the footage from the argument, then she would break the mic they had been using. Just shocking. And that is what she's like. That is Gemma Collins, boys and girls, in the raw. Did you ex really expect anything else? Talentless people. And that's, that is, that she is the sort of thing that is wrong with this damn country now. It's all me, 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 me all the time. Absolutely no interest in anyone else or anything else that's going on around her. Awful, talentless crap on the telly and running the country. Shocking, absolutely shocking. Uh, Shania, did you swear on your family-friendly show? I do hope not, Shania. It might have been in context, but I would never swear as to offend, my dear. Never, never, Shania. Katie, has Barry Manilow been to Australia? I don't know. I, I I I don't know if he's done the Opera House. I'd have to ask um, Wendy or someone, one of our Barry Manilow type people. Well, I know lots of Manilow girls. They're fantastic. We love Barry Manilow. And um, I'm, do you know, I'm not sure if Barry has been to Australia or not. That's a good question, that is. Don't forget, you can text into the show if you want to, boys and girls. Uh, the text number's up there. 07551 259675. 07551 259675. And I'll tell you what. We'll have, a, we'll have a phone line open as well, just in case anyone wants to call in today. Firing up Skype. One moment, please. <clears throat> See if that comes up. That, we'll only have the phone line open for like 10 minutes or so, my darlings. OK, there it is. That's on now. And there's the phone. So that's the phone number there. 0208 344 
020-8144, 020-8144-3477 if you want to call in. If you don't want to call in, that's fine as well. Just sit there and listen to me rabbiting away as uh, as always, okay? Another news story here, gang. Uh, Ant and Deck. Now, obviously, people aren't looking at me properly. Ant and Deck are making their fans swoon. Woo! Like that. Woo! Are you going swoon? Have a swoon. Have a swoon this morning. Woo! The lads are back together following Ant's uh, 10 months absence from TV screens. Alongside best pal Deck Donnelly, he's busy filming for the new series of Britain's Got No Talent. And their fans can't get over how great they look. And there's a picture of them. And I must say, they're looking quite trim. A little bit more work. And they may look as good as me. But that would be pushing it. As, as you well know. As you well know. Dressed up as conductors in tuxedos with towels and bow ties, they posed for an Instagram... St have, who's got, have you got Instagram? I haven't got Instagram. Or oh, I have. But I, I just don't use it. Instagram. Their female admirers couldn't help but swoon over the Hampson duo. And there they are, all dressed up in tuxedos and that. And, and they all look rather nice, really. The boys were presented with framed certificates at the London Palladium as they missed the glitzy ceremony um, of the um, National Television Awards. Is, is it the best, the, best, uh, the best duo or something like that? One? So they are looking very good. It's not easy trying to look trim and all that all the time. As you know, I've kind of fallen way by the wayside a little bit. Uh, with my way, I haven't. I've meant to weigh myself this morning, actually, but now I've had breakfast and copious amounts of tea, so I better not weigh myself now. Uh, maybe after the swimming, a little bit later. And keep my fingers crossed. Now, uh, why would you ring the police? Have you ever run, Have you ever been to McDonald's and found the need to ring the police? Ever done that? No, thought not. In the sun this morning, a McDonald's customer was arrested. When he dialed 999 to report... 999 is what we ring in the UK for uh, emergency numbers. I know possibly where you are. It's probably 112 or something like that. Uh, but uh, he dialed 999 to report staff for putting onions in his Big Mac. Unbelievable, isn't it? This bloke was drunk. Drunken Leslie uh, Madonna, 53, said he had a severe allergy and demanded that police attend. It's like they've done it on purpose. You know? And I've had this before. I've had this before with people. Where, for example, let's think of a good example. Okay, so a karaoke night. It's coming the last half hour of the night. And the list is full. And people are, can you squeeze me in? No, I can't, I can't squeeze you in. And then they go, oh, he won't let me sing. No, the list is full. There is no room for you to sing, dear. And they go on and, and I have to, I'm sorry, ladies, the young girls are the worst at this. They moan and they moan and they stand there and they give you evil looks in, in the thought, in, in some strange way, in their sad little minds, that that's going to change the, the, the list that is coming up, the, the, you know, just by being nasty and vile and staring at you. Not with me. Not with me. These other people have been in there all night long. I'm not going to pull someone else up just for you, am I? Um... Oh, just a minute. What have I done there? <sighs> oh, a new a new Skype update. Oh, really? Do we want to do that now? Oh, not at the moment. Not at the moment. Uh, officers, go back to the story in the sun this morning. Officers found him asking the diner's manager outside for a fight <laughs> because there was onions in his burger uh, and told him to leave. The insurance worker on his way to meet his wife to mark their wedding anniversary. Ding, 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 ding. Flew into a rage, fell down and tried to grab one cop by the leg as they tried to pick him up. <laughs> oh, I might try that one. I'd love to be grabbed by the leg at some point. Someone somewhere must want to grab my leg. <clears throat> City magistrate said the bloke wasn't happy as the burger contained onions, uh, which he is allergic to. He was given a 12-month community order after admitting assault. Uh, who's this now? Dear me. That's my mate. My mate says he's been around at 11. I'll have to disappear. I told you it'd be a short show today, didn't I? Um, uh, uh, 
uh, the person defending him, he actually has someone defending him in court here. The person defending him says it wasn't just an argument about the order being wrong, as her client has a severe allergy. Well, yeah, but honestly, going into a fit and writing to all the newspapers and orders, why do people do this now? Something goes wrong in their sad, lonely, pathetic lives and they're on the phone trying to claim compensation, writing to the newspapers, appearing on the Victoria Derbyshire show. Who's the miserable bloke on LBC? Or going on the James O'Brien. Oh, James O'Brien. Have you ever heard him on the radio? James O'Brien. What a miserable bastard that is. LBC he's on. And the fa I see. I keep seeing in my Twitter thing... I keep seeing little pictures. They What they do is upload clips from some of the shows on LBC. They never seem to upload Steve Allen stuff. He's the best one on there. Steve Allen and Clive Ball. They're the best two on there. And Nick, Nick, uh, Nick Ferrari's great. Nick Abbott used to be really good until he became obsessed by Brexit and Donald Trump all the time. <clears throat> so I don't listen to him anymore. I have Classic FM on sometimes coming home. Oh, yes, dear. Oh, I Good morning. This is Classic FM, Katie Braithwaite here, uh, inviting you to join me for some gorgeous music this morning. <laughs> she talks like that all the time. I can't remember. I bet she's got a mouth like a potty. I bet she, in real life, I bet Katie Braithwaite has got a mouth like a, like a toilet. Uh, not on Classic FM. Oh, my Classic FM. Katie Braithwick here. And we're going to play you some wonderful tunes. Here's one of my favourites from all time. It's the Bach Concerto Number no. Three in D flat minor, as played by the Royal Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> she talks like that on the way. Oh, it's all. Oh, it's annoying. <clears throat> that soft voice is so annoying. It really is. I wonder if she's dressed properly. She's probably sitting there in a pair of a bra and knickers, you know, doing it from home on a microphone. <laughs> Should we carry on with the story? Sorry, I'm, I've been I've been sidetracked. Um, another person claimed they were outraged at KFC. They rung up the police. KFC had run out of chicken, while others moaned about their breakfast not being served quickly enough and a bus driver whistling at the wheel of his vehicle. These are people that ring the police. They ring the police, wasting police time. Not that they haven't got anything else to do, the police. Oh, no, they're sitting there <clears throat> waiting for people to ring up and complain about their lunch. Please, these people should be charged a fee. They should absolutely be charged. If you ring up the police for something that's not a police matter, you should blooming well be charged a fee and stop wasting their time like that. They got burglars and muggers and moped uh, stabbing, what the, the knifing things to catch. They haven't got time to listen to you because you've got accidentally put onions on your burger. Just give it back to them and get another one. What's the problem? They mo Oh, blimmin' people moaning all the time. They get on my nerves. Uh, Adam says, I swoon every morning as I awaken to a picture of you. I have on my bedside table and then I pass the Chris shine. Adam's got a shrine to me in his house. Katie, I think you should have a, have a shrine to me. I think you could have a shrine to me as well, Katie. Just sort of, you know, t take a few screenshots and have them framed and put them possibly next to your bed. You know, then whenever you're upset or, or lonely, you just look at the picture of me and it should bring a warmth into your life, a warmth. And if that doesn't work, buy an electric blanket. They're just as good as well. Katie, uh, Backstreet Boys have a new album. I like them. Backstreet's back in time. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Oh, I like the Backstreet Boys. And NSYNC. I like NSYNC as well. Every little thing I do. Da, 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 da. Oh, we got a call coming in. A very important call coming in on line 17. Good morning. Who's calling the golden shot this morning? Hello? Chris, good morning. It's Brendan. A very good morning to you, young Brendan. How you doing? Young Brendan, I do like that on a Saturday morning. So, yes, how is life? How, 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 is, uh, how is your day in your sad, lonely, pathetic life today? Well, you've got that down in one. Well, I, it was fine until you mentioned the demon named James O'Brien. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. It, I, I, get, I, get, man. I get a cat-like hiss whenever I hear that note. He's so miserable. He's, as soon as he just comes on so channels, I, I can't eat. You make my blood boil. But a very, a, apart from the fact that he is really hard left, apart from that, even when he does the stuff that isn't, um, 
uh, like political, doesn't he do this question thing where you can say you can ask a question and see if anyone's got the answer to it? Um, not sure. Well, I don't listen to the guy. Uh, he's the sort of guy I think when he goes through passport control, he sort of covers up his UK passport because he's embarrassed. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he's one of those. It's like that. Well, that Nick Abbott's a bit like that now on at night time. Do you listen to Nick Abbott on LBC? No, I don't, don't, don't know him. No, no. You don't know him. OK, well, he's on tonight. And what's today? Saturday. Uh, so it's last night, Friday night and Saturday nights, 10 till 1. He used to be really funny and um, and I used to laugh along. And, I, you know, uh, the, the funniest thing that happens to him now is that the lights keep going out in the studio. He's in this studio that I've got these motion detectors on the lights, right? right. And always he can be in full flow and say, oh, God, the lights have gone out again. And he has to get up and start waving his arms around. <laughs> to it. Well, but like, it, you, like you, I, when I listen to the radio, I like to, you know, listen to it in a sort of thing, in a lighter mood. So yeah. Nick Ferrari does make me giggle. Yes, James yes. James O'Brien just... De depressing. Yeah, and uh, Nick Ferrari's, I like him very much. Have you tried Julia Hartley Brewer on talk radio? No, don't know that one. Right. I remember, I'm up in Nor I remember I'm up in Norfolk, cut off from the rest of the country. Yeah, talk, talk, talk radio is on DAB or on the internet all over the country, and they have okay. a, a lady on there, Julie Hartley Brewer. If you hate James O'Brien, you will absolutely love her. She talks common sense. OK, okay. Like she, yourself, she, she yeah, she won't any have anything to do with snowflakes or anyone like that. She lays into him, lays into him a little bit like the Michael Gove speech. Did you see that a couple of weeks ago? I did. Yes. Oh. yes another man. My um, blood boil as well. That was wonderful. That was what you did. Did you say you were in Norfolk? I mean, in, right in the middle of Norfolk Broads. Norfolk. You know it. I we had, yeah, oh, yes, I do. It's years ago since I did it. I think I was about 18 at the time, 18, 19, 21. But we did get a boat on the Norfolk Walls. And it had like an automatic roof. So whenever you came to like a low bridge, you'd have to open the roof to get underneath yeah. it. And of course, there are you, know, you have to do that with, yeah. Or you, we, you, know, <laughs> <where it is. laughs> you know what kids are like. So we're mucking around with this button all the time. Open, close, open, close. And then it came to a bridge. The bloody thing wouldn't open then, would it? We'd run out of battery. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to stop there for a while while the battery recharged with the diesel generator. Does that sound about right? Yeah, it does sound about right. As a local, it is quite good fun going down and watching the tourists get stuck under. I live near Potheim, which is right in the middle of the broads. Okay. Very low bridge. Tidal. Right. So yeah, you can see the idiots getting stuck under these real big old fake <laughs> photos and put them on Facebook. <laughs> you get money on the YouTube videos for that, I'm sure. Or you can send well, it you send it into that Jeremy Be Oh, he's not around anymore, is he? Jeremy Beadle or um Oh, what's his name? You know, where they put the funny videos on and that sort of thing. Oh, um you've been framed. Yes. But now done by now done by that awful man Harry Hill. Oh, yeah, it's um it's another one. We better not get going on him. <laughs> well, I'll be honest, I think he's very good at what he does, but he's not for me. You understand what I mean? Uh, I I, yeah, I can I can out, often he goes out of the street like that, doesn't he? Does he really? What with that stupid yep. collar? Yeah, I saw him posting in a letterbox of all places on the Euston <laughs> Road one day, and he was in full <laughs> big collar attire. <laughs> no, it's, it's not for me. I'll always say if there's someone I think who's good on the telly, then I'll say it. Uh, but you know, they're not necessarily for me. We've all got a personal preferences. But people that shouldn't be on the telly, like Gemma Collins. There's, there, that, well, that's, there's just no talent at all. Oh, my, mind you, sound, sound in your, you sound like you might fancy Gemma Collins. Would I be right there, Brendan? Um, you're probably more my cup of tea, Chris. Oh, I don't know. I think you've got a little <laughs> soft spot for Gemma, haven't I, you? I, Was it? I have been married. I have two children, but I swing I spat on the other side now. So there we go. <laughs> I was married once years ago, you know, when I was 21, I'll have you know. Yes. Oh, there for, you go. Oh, I was married for ages, nine whole months. <laughs> <laughs> wow, mine did last 13 years, so there we go. Listen, while we're talking about famous people, do you want to hear a funny story? Please do, yes. Okay, so um, many years ago, I got on a train from Norwich to um, London and sat with a crazy lady called Sue Pollard. Oh, yeah, she's great. I met her. Yeah, go on. What a fruitcake. She lives in um, Camden, anyway. We yeah. got to Liverpool Street, and she said, oh. um, where are you going? And I said, I was going to Camden. And I said, we'll share a cab. Anyway, dropped her off at her house. And her house sign above the door is called Campus Arseholes. Camp. <laughs> well, look, I mean, 
Have you ever been in Camden? All the mad people are there, Brendan. They're mad uh, as yeah. hatters in Camden. You go in the pubs there, there's some right characters. You know non-Irish Mary from Ireland? Do you know her? <laughs> <laughs> no. Non-Irish Mary. For... Now, OK, so she's been a friend of mine for years and years. I met her at a pub called The Eagle in Camden where I was doing the karaoke and she was one of the first people to come. Oh, hello. It's an Irish accent, which I can't do. Hello, sure. Chris. Be sure. Hello, Chris. I just want to introduce myself. I'm Mary. They call me Mad Mary uh, from Ireland. And from that moment... I fell in love with that lady. She is hilarious. And then the, the second week, she, she is mad. The same as me, possibly the same as you. She's absolutely off her rocker. And then, then the next week, there was a, a was in doing this, and it was only a small place, really. It was, you know, a room in a pub. <clears throat> and there was this group of lads there who were, they weren't nasty. They were just a bit rowdy. And she literally came in front of the DJ stuff that I added because it was all my own stuff so my speakers and all that and, and put her arms around out like that so that they couldn't get past <laughs> anyway she's um she's such a one and I've known her for years and years at the moment she's battling cancer uh, pretty badly uh, uh, pretty pretty well um uh the there is a time limit but she went past the time limit some months ago now I've got to tell you and she's still there and she's away at the moment on a little uh, on a little excursion. She doesn't mind. She she much prefers people to tell tell her how it is. None of this oh, oh how are you feeling today, Matt? She don't want any of that. <clears throat> she just no, wants I, I'm, and I she, was the same, but I'm still I'm still here um twenty five years later. So there we go. Right. Well there you go then. Yeah, you you, you don't want you know, you want people to say, How are you? How are you coping? Yeah. Not, not just she you know, is, look away. Or, she about is, to kick the bucket or whatever. She is fighting it with everything that she's got. So she's doing so bloody well, I can't tell you. Really. I wouldn't be surprised at all if there's going to be a turnaround at some point and then she walks back into that pub with her full set of hair as well. And when, when, of course, they had the radiation treatment and all that. But she laughs at it, Brendan. She laughs. You have to. She you have laughs to, and that's, that's in the and she takes the piss out of herself. She does. She's got this selection of wigs. Okay, her hair's grown back a little bit now. It's a bit very, very. Uh, uh, what's you know? Uh, what do you what do you call it? Very light. Um, not much yeah, of yeah. it. Not much I of it. it. But it is growing back. Uh, but when she was when she completely lost her, she had a selection of wigs. And she would come in, and uh, because. Mary and I are on the same level. She'd come in. I said, Mary's in the house and a brand new look. Yes, gang. It's the Scottish Terrier look this morning. How fantastic is that? And she'd come in with this wig on. It looked just like a Scottish Terrier. It did. <laughs> with the centre pine and everything. <laughs> Mini, but, mini me, was it? Was it mini me? I, oh, I don't know what mini you me know, is. Is that the yellow? The Beano or the dandy? God, I'm showing my age now. Mini me. Mini me, wasn't it? The, mini minx. Mini Min minx. Oh, I don't know what that is. What's the mini? What's the mini minx? Yeah, mini minx. I think it was a Scottish one, wasn't it? You know, it looks a bit like what's the name? That bloody that's another bloody awful person, leader of the Scottish National Party. Oh, her dear. I'm sure. I'm oh, sure she. Jimmy I'm, Cranky. Well, I reckon she likes girls. I can't believe that is a straight lady. I'm sorry. She absolutely <laughs> likes girls. She's got the power behind her. I just, I, I, the only thing is when these people come on the telly, I'm sorry, I had to put the subtitles on. I can't understand a bloody word they're saying, dear, from that uh, that place. Well, I did work in Glasgow for eight years. Well, I worked for a Glaswegian company and it took me about two years to actually go into the office and understand what they were saying. So. <laughs> <laughs> and they say Norfolk is bad. <laughs> I've, I've not been understanding a word what you've been saying in this phone call, to be honest. <laughs> really well. We we we, we babbled very well for a Saturday morning, haven't we? Brendan, I love to go now because I'm running out of time, mate. All right. <laughs> All the best, Chris. See you Thanks ever so much for calling in. Bye bye now. Bye, Brendan bye. in the. Brendan in sunny Norfolk there, boys and girls. How lovely to get a phone call right at the end uh, of the show there. We will have to go here, boys and girls, because uh, I'm running out of time. I just do these uh, messages. Uh, Katie says uh, Brendan has a really nice accent. There you are. She likes your accent there, Brendan. Oh, she's on her way up there now, Katie. Mark, do you remember Caesar the Geezer? Yes, he got put in prison, Caesar the Geezer. Uh, fraud, I think it was. I think it was fraud, Caesar the Geezer. Uh, and Mark used to do pranks on yeah, Caesar the Geezer he did 
Mark did pranks. Good morning to Rob Shaggy Kershaw. Good morning to you as well, sir. Peter Lake, ice, ice, baby. Bum, 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 bum. Ice, ice, baby. Let's do today's birthdays, gang, okay? And then uh, I must get ready for me, mate. It'll be over soon. It'll be rapture. If I'm late, he goes mad. Uh, happy birthday this morning. Oh, is there any birthdays? One minute. Maybe there's no birthdays today. That that does happen occasionally. Oh, no, there we are. Looking in the wrong place. Happy birthday this morning on this Saturday, February the 2nd. Oh, hang on a minute. There's a text message from Maureen. Good morning. Main problem is when I click on your subscriber pick, I get your videos come through in order. The site freezes and won't let me scroll down to your upload. It tells me to go back again. It freezes. I wonder, is there an app to update? Oh, you've probably done that already. It freezes and tells you to go back. <clears throat> I, I, I'm at a loss with this, Maureen. I really am. I'm going to have a look at my mate's telly later on and see if I can work anything out from there. We'll do that, actually, this afternoon. I'll see if I can work it out from there. All right, Maureen. So we bring up... Uh, what do you type in to get to me? Can you tell me what you type in to get to me? Or is it like saved as a favourite or something? I need to know what address is at the top there. Maybe I can recreate the the incident so I can see for myself then what's going on. Good morning, Mike Cullen. Morning. Angela's there as well. Uh, happy birthday today to Jean Law Law. Good morning, Jean. Happy birthday. Uh, Tom, who I worked with uh, Belushi's in London Bridge. Good morning, Tom. Happy birthday to you, Tom Burwick. 26 years old today. Pamela Darty. Good morning, Pamela. Happy birthday. Jerome. Jerome Lefebvre. I think that's how you say it. 40 years old today, Jerome, aren't you? Happy birthday. Pete Jones's birthday today. Uh, Opa Asep. Happy birthday. Nicolette Street. Wonderful singer who I worked with a couple of times. Good morning, Nicolette. Happy birthday to you. The delightful Charlotte Peacock who drives a bus up here near Manchester somewhere. Happy birthday to you, Charlotte. And James Beaumont is 33 years old on this Saturday as well. Happy birthday, gang. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Enjoy your birthday. Katie says uh, maybe she needs to turn it all off at PowerPoint to reset it all. At the PowerPoint. I, I would imagine she's done that already, to be honest, Katie. Uh, more, more in something went wrong with her the way she watches the YouTube. And um, she says all the YouTube things are all jumbled up now. Uh, what's the time? Ten to, I really got to get going. Look, now you see, I've got, I've now got my playlist up. I'm now looking at the United Kingdom Talk video playlist, Maureen. If you, I, I assume you're still with us at the moment. So I've got that in front of me. Now there, it says playlist settings. I'm clicking on that. And it says playlist privacy public. It says, oh, there's another call coming in there. That's a bit late. Uh, let's take it. Hello. Good morning. Oh, wrong, hang on. Wrong button. Morning. Morning, Chris. Who's that there? It's Mr. Cullen here. Ah, oh, good morning, Mike Cullen. All right. You're right at the end of yeah. the show there, Mike. Are you well, dear? I am very well. I just ran to, just, a, just a quick phone call just to yes. uh, ask if you got those uh, Nick Abbott drops all right. I did indeed. Thank you very much for those little uh, bits and pieces. I'm not going to use them. Uh, because obviously they're his, and he might be a, a, a bit upset if I was to use his stuff, but I do appreciate you sending those over to me. Thank you very much. All those different voices and all that. He was talking. Yeah. Have you heard his podcast yet, by the way? Yes, I've, uh, I'm on the, the fourth or fifth one right now. Yeah. Oh, OK. He was, he was mentioning on his show last night, because I did have him on for a bit. It wasn't too bad on the Brexit last night. Uh, uh, he was some lady who calls in, Mm. Um. Oh gosh, and she's really good. Mm -hmm. I, you didn't hear it last night. That would have been about quarter past half past twelve. He mentioned this. You can't. I, oh, you I was, don't know what I'm talking about, do you? I was probably downstairs getting some need. 
Oh, was you? Yeah. Um, yeah. No. I, I can't remember either. I, I used to love Nick Abbott, but he's just com- become totally obsessed by Brexit and Trump. So I, I don't really I listen at the moment. No. I, I'll, <laughs> you all have. I'll have a little you listen. Uh, it's rare now that he's talking about something else. I remember him saying on the show the other day, he can't remember what he used to talk about before Brexit and Trump come along. <laughs> I know. Oh, I just excuse think me. It's all over in Dumbleth right now. Because yeah, really yeah, exactly. Everybody's nerves in LBT. Exactly, yeah, yeah. You know, anyway, Mike, I'm... I'll have to go because I've got to get ready for me, mate. All right? All right. Okay, Chris. Look too. after yourself. Bye-bye, Mike. Thanks, Mike Cullen Bye-bye. calling in. Uh, he's a lovely chap. He is all the way up in Newcastle there. Now, it says playlist settings public. It says public. However, it does say ordering manual. So if I put date added newest, let's see if that makes any difference. Save that. Okay, so we've saved that. Auto add. What's auto add? Auto add is set as well now. Okay, so United Kingdom talk video is the playlist I'm looking at, Maureen. I've clicked playlist settings. It says playlist privacy public. Okay, so it's definitely on public. Ordering, date added, newest. So the newest one should always be at the top. I don't know what that is. Uh, and that's it. Right, let's save that. Let's just, let's go to, I, I'll tell you what, let's go to private and then back to public and save that. Right. Oh, that seems to have got stuck. One minute. Why is that stuck all together now? One minute. Playlist settings. They added newest and public. Okay. So I don't know. So I've I've just done something again now. I've put it date added newest, but it's definitely it says playlist settings, playlist privacy public. So it's definitely set on public. Okay. But we've now changed it so it says ordering date added newest. Well, is there anything else I can look at here? One minute. Liked videos. Now you mentioned liked videos as well, didn't you? Let's have a look at that. Liked videos. I don't see settings there for that. Shuffle play. Shuffle play. Home videos about. View as, okay, view as returning subscriber. Let's have a look at view as returning subscriber. So that was look at it. Now, now I can see all that there now. <sighs> Customised channel, about maybe, about. Oh no, that just brings back, back to the... Okay, so we've done something else, Maureen. Try that now. See if that works, okay? And we'll see if that's see if that I can only just keep trying things like that. But what you're saying to me there is it's not set on private, it's set on public. I mean, obviously, I don't think you know this yourself. Someone's telling you this, aren't they? Is it the people at Virgin possibly that are telling you this? I keep trying things. Why you can't see them, I do not know. But it's not like we're sitting here, you know, doing nothing about it. We are trying, all right, my darling. Anyway, that's it for the show today. Must get ready now, boys and girls. Thanks ever so much for watching. And uh, I'll see you again, hopefully, at some time tomorrow. Uh, to, I, I don't know what time tomorrow, maybe earlier tomorrow morning. I don't know if I can get one before I go into church. That's probably the best time to do it. So maybe maybe around about the same time as it was today, all right? Have a lovely Saturday, and I'll see you soon. Keep warm. Bye-bye now.